You guys ready? You jacked? Heck really yeah. Jacked? I am ready. I just want to be there and make sure that this doesn't end up as a found footage. Yours says eight hours forty two minutes. Was it right, Angel? Mine right. says six hours fifty two minutes. Seriously, that's it. That'd be awesome. That's why I figured we'll get there. We leave by ten at seven hours. We'll be there by five at the latest. We're heading to one of the premier birding destinations in the Midwest, the Sac Zimbog. The Sac Zimbog is composed of around three hundred square miles of land, including a variety of habitats and even a few towns. A mix of different habitats provides ideal conditions for many boreal species of birds, such as great gray owls, black back woodpeckers, boreal owls, and more. The bog is located about an hour away from Duluth, Minnesota. Many of the birds that call the bog home are extremely rare in Wisconsin, and our group was excited to have the opportunity to see these birds up close for the first time. Since the drive from Wisconsin was lengthy, we left early in the morning to maximize our birding time. What do you guys think the first bird we're going to see is? Crow. No. But well, what do you think it's going to be then? It might be crow. I don't think, I don't think it'll be crow. But well, what do you think it's going to be? I honestly then? think it'll be gray gray. You're a gray gray. I am a gray gray. <laughs> so it's been really foggy and it's just been pretty rough. You can see by the car. We're driving back into it right now. Can't see a flipping thing. Despite driving through some difficult conditions, we arrived at the bog before sunup, primed to get our first look at some birds we had never seen before. It's dark. Can yeah. you see me? Nope. No? Testing, take one. Okay, well, we're heading to a spot to look for great gray owls as the sun is coming up because they're most active at dawn and dusk. So we're gonna see if we can pick up one of those before we head back for some sharp-tailed grouse. So we'll see how it goes. Within 10 minutes of cruising around the bog, we noticed a larger shape, backlit by first light. We pulled over to the side of the road to get a closer look. The dark silhouette turned out to be one of our target birds, the great gray owl. We watched it scan the prairie for food until suddenly it swooped up to a tree within feet of us. The up-close look at such an impressive bird marked the beginning of one of the best birding days we've had. As much as we wanted to wait for the sun to rise in order to get a better look, we moved on to try for sharp-tailed grouse, hoping to get another view of a great gray owl during the daylight. One lifer. <laughs> One down. <laughs> While driving down the snowy roads on the way to the sharp-tailed grouse lek, we briefly encountered one more great gray owl, a perching northern shrike, and a ruffed grouse. When we arrived at the sharp-tailed grouse lek, we immediately saw several birds moving around in the distance. We not only saw our second target bird of the morning, but got to watch them perform their courtship displays. Eventually, we noticed some closer to the road offering even better looks. The sharp-tailed grouse is a chicken-like bird that lives in open grasslands of the northern United States and Canada. Each year, the grouse meet at their communal dancing grounds, known as leks. Adults have a small head crest, short pointed tail with white at the base, and a brown mottled pattern on the rest of the body. Sharp-tailed grouse behavior is similar to that of prairie chickens, but sharp-tailed grouse utilize a wider variety of habitats. While at the lek, we heard the call of another Northwoods bird species as a pine grosbeak was singing in a nearby tree. After observing it for a few minutes, we headed off to try and find another target species at the Warren Nelson Memorial Bog. We're looking for woodpeckers now, black-backed and three-toed. We're we'll following this path into the bog to see if we can find one. But we have to keep our voice in low until we get and head further into the bog. We entered the bog, listening for tapping and looking for any sign of woodpecker activity. After walking a short distance, we heard rustling up above us in the treetops. The culprit was a gray jay, one of the friendliest boreal birds. It gave us a few quick looks before it moved on and we continued our search. After more walking, we were about to turn back when we heard tapping on a nearby tree. We walked closer and were elated to find not just one, but two American three-toed woodpeckers. 
The American three-toed woodpecker breeds farther north than any other American woodpecker species. It is not often seen by people since it lives in the northern boreal and coniferous forests. Most woodpecker species have four toes on each foot, however black-backed and three-toed woodpeckers only have three. They are similar in appearance to black-backed woodpeckers, but can be distinguished by the white barring on their back. Feeling great about finding another target species, we headed out of the bog ready to move on to our next location. But before we got too far away, Rob called us back into the woods with another find. Yeah, buddy! Where have you been? Did you guys get the blackbacks? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Black-backed woodpeckers feed mostly on wood-boring insects and store food in tree cavities and fallen logs. They are considered eruptive as they move from place to place searching for insects, specifically in recently burned areas. They are relatively uncommon in most parts of the United States, but do live year-round in boreal forests of the west and northern Midwest. After watching the black-backed woodpeckers for a few minutes, we pressed on, wondering what would be next. I feel like we've seen like a ton of great stuff. And now all we have to do is get like closer looks. On the way out, we encountered a few more gray jays and got a rare look at a black-billed magpie, if only for a fleeting couple of seconds. At this rate, we can go home tomorrow. But why would we want to? <laughs> After our earlier excitement, we stopped to take a quick lunch break, and Rob made some questionable food choices. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I'm trying to attract the squat. What is it, Rob? It's herring. <laughs> Would you look at that? I'm bringing in the ivory gull. <laughs> yeah, Jesus rolls in. Oh, yeah, oh, it is. Oh. Ah, it's not that bad. Breathe on it a little bit. <laughs> this is how you record temperature drops. Rob, you making a sandwich? Oh, he's too busy with his hair. <laughs> We've gone two hours without seeing a new bird. I feel like it's the worst day ever. <laughs> oh, he's going to get sick. I'm going to get sick. After filling up on frozen food, we headed to one of the hottest feeder destinations in town, Mary Lou's. There we got a look at one of the brightest birds in the forest, the evening grosbeak. Evening grosbeaks can be identified by their yellow body, dark head, eye stripe, black and white wings, and large conical bill. Females are mostly gray but have the same large bill and black and white wings. These birds are very social and are often found in flocks. During the winter, they are predominantly seed eaters, but during the summer, their diet consists mostly of insects. While they are considered songbirds, evening grosbeaks do not have a melodic song, but rather use a series of chirps and call notes to communicate. Having seen several good birds before noon, we felt excited about our day. However, we were still hoping for looks at some of the bog's owl species. Little did we know, our day was about to get even better. Oh my god! Let's go, let's go! Keep it down, you psychopaths! Great Gray sounds like what you call a wise elderly man. I'm a great he's a white. he's a great gray. Gandalf was a great gray. Dumbledore. Dumbledore also a great gray. Brett Favre, great gray. Lake assault boats. What? What is an assault boat? Silly boats that assault other boats. <laughs> So like pirates. <laughs> Possibly. So they make boats for pirates. I'm the captain now. <laughs> well, it's actually like Survivor, where we vote somebody out <laughs> every day. And it's you. And eventually it'll be Barry. Yes! <laughs> I'm staying. I got five weeks vacation. I'm good.